So the first thing you have to do is download some components from ASCOM. So you just go on to the ASCOM standards website and there's two things you'll have to download from here. The first is the platform, the ASCOM platform, so there's a download button there. As you can see it's currently 6.4, which I think is one increment up from the version I downloaded. And you also need to download from the developer's side here under driver development, although you're not actually, of course, developing drivers, the platform developer components. So you need to download those two things. So this will download the ASCOM platform. As you see, I've got 6.3. The latest version looks like it's 6.4. The ASCOM platform developer version, also 6.3. And then depending on what you're going to develop, you need the actual device drivers as well. So I have two here, one for my Skywatcher EQ6 Pro mount. And more importantly, what we'll be using for this demonstration is the ZWO filter wheel driver. This came on the CD with the ZWO filter wheel. So just to recap, you will need to download the platform and the developer kit from the ASCOM website and the driver for the piece of kit you're writing your software for. In this case it's the ZWO filter wheel. So you need to install those three things. Once you've installed those three things you can then fire up Visual Studio. Now the Visual Studio that I've got here is the enterprise version. You obviously don't need the enterprise version for this. You can actually download a free a very much cut down version which I believe would still be perfectly okay for what we're about to do. So Visual Studio of some flavour. So starting from scratch the first thing we need to do is obviously start up a new project. So we're going to make it a Windows form application and let's call it uh, ZWO filter wheel controller. Okay, so start off template form, let's just call it something nice, let's call it uh, filter wheel controller. Okay, uh, let's just have a quick rename of the standard form file, let's call it uh, main. Okay, now before you can do anything, you have to download, or sorry, you have to reference some .NET libraries. Now when you installed your platform developer it will have installed all the ASCOM libraries that it needs but you need to actually reference that. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, I'm just going to click on the project and say add reference. So you go to add reference and <laughs> okay the two already appear in here because I have used them previously, but let's let's suppose they don't appear. You have to select two libraries. You have to get the driver access, and it's also a good idea to get utilities at the same time. So to get these two libraries, click on Browse, and you have to go to C Program Files, Common Files, ascom.net and there you see the two libraries that you require so select both of those click on add ok and you'll now see that your .net program is referencing these two ascom libraries ok so now you can actually start to code your application. So for the sake of this, let's do a little bit of design on the fly. Um, as an enterprise architect, I generally <laughs> would not recommend this approach, but let's do it for, this, for the sake of this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is um, select a filter. I don't know why I put a label on there. 
so we're going to have a button actually what I'll do I'll just increase the font so you can make sure we can all see what's happening here okay so let's have a button let's call it uh, button uh, select filter and let's change the text of that button to say select filter so we're going to put some code on this to select the actual filter wheel let's just design it out first so we know what we're going to do and I think let's have a text box where we show the actual filter wheel we've selected so let's call that text box um, filter selected let's make it read only we're not going to type anything into that and once we've selected the filter the next thing we want to do is connect to it so let's have a connect button let's call that imaginatively titled connect let's change the text to you've guessed it connect uh, I'll, I will also put a disconnect button on here now this is a not probably the way you it's not the best way of doing it I mean what you could do is on this connect button once you've actually connected you could programmatically change this text to say disconnect so the button toggles or you could have a checkbox of course and so you check it you then connect and when you uncheck it you disconnect but I think for the sake of this demonstration this will be able to separate the code out and it will make it easy to understand so let's call that disconnect and let's put some text on it also disconnect okay so with a filter wheel the most important thing is what filter your filter wheel is actually on so I'm going to put a label on current position and another text box to show the current position so let's make that text box read only and let's call it text current position So this is going to show us the current position of the filter wheel. And of course the other thing you want to do with a filter wheel is to move the filter um, forwards and backwards. So to do that we're going to have two buttons. One called button next with a text of next and surprise surprise a button called previous button previous and some text previous right so I think that is the design of our application it's all quite straightforward I think that's really all we need let's just make it a little bit longer okay so now I'll just save that uh, yeah I'll just save it to my temp folder okay so now we need to put some actual code behind the scenes so we're going to go into the, the form so obviously at the moment we have no code whatsoever we just have the form class itself so the first thing I'm going to do is we need to put in a reference to the filter wheel because although we've included the ASCOM references to the ASCOM libraries we haven't declared anything about what device we're going to do so 
I'm going to declare a private member variable up here and call it filter wheel and this is and now you can see ascom has appeared and ascom has appeared because we're referencing these libraries so we're going to have ascom and we're going to be looking for driver access and we want the filter wheel now this is actually quite good so you can see here all the different devices that are supported so the telescope which is obviously the mount and all these other objects we want filter wheel so this is the class we're going to use to drive all of the access to the actual filter wheel now I'm going to declare one other thing up here um, bear with me on this it's just a string a member variable which is a string which is where we're going to hold the name of the filter wheel we've actually selected okay so if we go back to the screen design so the first thing you want to do is select filter so let's go into the code of that button so we're on button select filter so uh, let's put a bit of error hand in it's always good to have a bit of error hand in isn't it don't really need it for this demonstration but let's be just in case we get any surprises uh, that do quite simple obviously in your real world you might want to elaborate a lot of what I'm doing here but uh, there we are so what do we want to do so we want to select the filter you click this button we want to select the filter so now I'm going to hold the filter we select into that variable so that equals and now we go into ASCOM again and driver access again and filter wheel again and we have a method called choose that's very handy now one thing you do have to do here is to say what you're choosing so we are actually choosing a ASCOM um, okay I'll tell you what I'm going to say simulator at the moment here you see why so this means it will, it will still give you this will actually present you with a dialog box if you have installed your own ASCOM drivers which we have done because we've installed the ZWO the dialog box that appears will also include that um, if you want to try it against a simulator you can so this will actually include the simulator and any drivers that you've installed so let's just put in a little bit of code here I think um, so if string is nothing then we shall say uh, message box no filter selected and let's, let's quit at that point so if you don't select a filter there's obviously nothing else we can do um, otherwise I think we can what else if there's what else otherwise I think what we can do is the text field we put here text filter selected we can display the filter we've actually so text uh, filter selected and we can display what we've done so what we're doing here this piece of this library call here will pop up a dialog box we we'll select a filter if we haven't selected the filter we just quit otherwise we display the filter we've actually selected and most importantly this member variable we selected to the filter that we've got okay now what i'll just do as well before we actually run it the connect box here let's let's do the connect just to show how you connect to something so again double click on that so we're in the code here so first of all I think we'll say just a bit of protective coding don't really need it for this demo but let's do it anyway um, right 
So if you haven't selected the filter and you're trying to connect to it, let's not do it because otherwise obviously there's no point. Um, actually what I will do, I'll just put some, again a little bit of defensive error handling around this. And let's just pop out a simple error again. Okay. So if you haven't selected the filter, we're going to say, nah, that's no good. If we have selected the filter, we're going to carry on. And we're now going to say this class, which is the filter wheel. This is where we instantiate the class and we actually set it. Okay, so we say new scom uh, driver access filter wheel for the filter that we selected okay so this is setting our member variable class to the filter wheel which we selected via that pop-up there Now this in itself will bring up some built-in ESCOM pop-up screens which we will see when we run this. So now we can connect and now we use the class mfilterwheel dot sorry wrong one that one <laughs> Connected equals true, and that will connect your filter wheel. So at this point, it's connected. Now, what I'm also going to set here is this current position display was here in this text current position. So now that we've connected, we can say text current position. is mfilter wheel dot position now why have I done that as with a lot of dot net languages array subscripts start at zero so when filter wheel one is your current position this will report zero I don't want to display zero on the screen zero for a filter wheel position doesn't really ring true with me. It's a, it's a programming condition. It's not a, it's not a logical position really. So I'm adding one to it so it will show where we really are. Okay. So that's it. Now the dis oh, I'll just put a disconnect on as well. Now what I'm sure you can probably guess is we use that to connect. So we can use that to disconnect. And I should again put some error handling around it because obviously there are there can be conditions. I'm sure you can guess when when a disconnect can fail. Okay, so we should now have that button coded, and the connect and disconnect buttons coded. Let's compile it. Successful, no errors. Whew. Okay, let's run it. So here we go. Select filter, click, let's click that, see what happens. Now this, obviously we haven't coded any of this. This is the ASCOM pop-up, dialogue pop-up that's appeared because of that library call we made. And you can see one of the entries is a simulator which was highlighted by default, selected by default. You can also see I've installed my ZWO driver. It's actually appeared twice for some bizarre reason, but anyway, I've got the ZWO driver there. And we've got this filter wheel simulator. So my ZWO driver uh, camera isn't connected yet. So I'm gonna go for the simulator. So I've selected the simulator and there's a properties button here, which again is all down to ASCOM. Click on properties 
and it pops this up. This is purely an ASCOM dialog, and you can say here how many filters you've got. So it's set to five, and you can actually name them. Now you can get access to all of this in your in your program. I won't go through it now, but it's most important that you have that set correctly to be the number of filters in your driver. So that's so, sorry, the number of filters in your filter wheel. Okay, and then we're going to connect. And you can see ASCOM, because we're in a simulator, has popped up this thing. So we've connected successfully. I'm now going to disconnect, and you can see it's disconnected successfully. So we now know selecting the filter, connecting, disconnecting is working. Fantastic. Let's go in and code up the next and previous buttons. So next button so what you want to do is move the filter forward so what I'm going to do here is create another sub and I'm going to call it move position and we're going next so I want to move forward one position so let's leave that for a second and let's go to previous and I'm going to say move position minus one because we want to go back one and now I'm going to create my uh, my sub, and I'll give it an argument of let's call it p number, and it's an integer. So what? Let's be let's be good and put a uh, by a vowel in the front as well. Okay. So we're going to click, the next button is going to call move position with one, and click previous is going to call move position with minus one. So this will involve a little bit of coding now because we have to test for some certain conditions. So the first thing I want to do is record where we are at the moment. So what position are we in at the moment? So I know we've displayed it on the screen in that text field when we first connected if you remember but I don't want to read it off the text field so I'm going to reacquire that so and once again let me just put in some error handling Right, so that will tell us the position we're in at the moment. Now, we also need to know how many positions your filter wheel is. And there's a couple of ways you can do this, actually. But um, one way I'm going to do it is... That. Now, what's that doing? You remember that dialog box that popped up when we connected? and it had a table where you could name your filter wheel so you could put red green blue whatever you wanted so that will read those names so if you set them up that will bring back the name of each filter wheel that i've set up now you can then use that to display that on your screen if you want to and things like that so i'm not going to do that now because that's getting a bit more elaborate and it's not really necessary but that could be very useful for you, so um, it's worth it's, it's a trick. It's a trick worth worth knowing. Now I'm going to put in. Uh, so we act what we're actually trying to get here is the number of positions of the uh, filter wheel. And to do that, I'm going to say uh, names not length. Okay, so I've got an array of the names. I'm just saying, how long is that array? Because the length of the array is obviously the same as the number of uh, filter wheels. So it's just one way of doing it. Okay, so the current position we've got. So what we want to do is say L current position equals uh, L current position plus P number. So the numbers you passed in there. So that number is going to be 1 or minus 1. So what we're saying is current position plus that. So obviously if it comes as minus 1, it's taking 1 off. So the current position is say three, it will now become uh, four if we click that, and it will become two if we click that. So that's where we want to go, okay? So the current position is now where we want to go. But we need to be careful, because obviously we've only got one to five 
position so we need a little bit of um, checking in here if we've gone too low then we want the current position actually to be we want it to loop back round to that yeah so if we were on filter zero which is the first and we've clicked previous we go to minus one well we don't want to be minus one we actually want to go back to filter five and as we know filter five is really subscript filter four so we say minus one if you get my drift there's all sorts of ways you can code the same thing so do what you want but essentially you want to make sure that your filter will be instructed to move to a position that actually exists and you're not going over or under um, and if we have overshot then we want to go back to the first filter which is zero I think that's right we will soon find out okay and M filter well dot position equals that now that is the instruction that will actually move your filter wheel so that is the instruction that move your filter so here we've worked out where we were and where we want to go and that is the command that will actually move your filter wheel now the filter wheel movement will not be instantaneous you know it will chug along for I don't know half a second a second whatever so uh, one thing we can put in uh, is this if the filter wheel is moving the position is returned as minus one so I'm going to put a weight condition in or a sleep condition rather of uh, point 0.2 of a second so what we're saying here is move the filter wheel and wait while it's moving. When it drops out of this while loop it will have completed its move and then we can then say display in the text field where we are and that's it that should be all of the code you need to control your filter wheel let me just compile that it's working right now we're going to run it so let's see if it works I think that logic's right let's see okay so here we are select filter we we'll use the simulator for now remember it's set to five yeah there's five there and we define five there so the names array would read those first five there because that's set to five and it runs it reads the first five there so that's how we're going to know okay we've selected simulator filter let's connect to it ascon pops this up because it's a simulator which is actually quite handy because you can verify your code is working now you note immediately my screen says we're on position one the filter wheel simulator for Ascon says zero, so that's correct. I don't like seeing position zero. I don't think that's sensible in the real world. One says one, that's fine. So let's click next. There we go. It says one, one says two. Perfect. Next. Three. Four. Five. Now, when we click next again, we should go back to one. Yes, I've got my logic correct. I've gone back to one, and of course that displays zero. So we wrap round, which is right. So let's go previous. Two. One. So now we should wrap round to five. Perfect. So there we are. That's how it works. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect my ZWO disconnect and come out of that 
Right, okay, I've just plugged in my ZWO filter wheel. Yeah, I think Windows has got it. Okay, let's fire up. Select filter wheel. I'm going to connect my ZWO. Properties. And you see the screen is different. This is coming from the ZWO driver, which we installed. But again, you can define your filter wheel. So I've set up my five filters there. So it's, found, it's now using the ZWO driver that came on the CD with the ZWO filter wheel. Great, so I've selected ZWO. I'm going to connect. Current position zero. Right, now I'm just going to hold the microphone next to the filter wheel <laughs> and hopefully you'll hear it whiz. Right, here we go. I'm going to click next. And again. And again. And now I'm going to click previous. Brilliant. So it's all worked fine. So that's great. So that really is how ASCOM drivers work. And once you've got the philosophy of how you connect to one device, you can use the same philosophy for all other devices. Uh, as a very quick example, here we were using the class defined for the filter wheel. If you wanted to control your mount, for example, then we could have a class called M mounts as ASCOM dot driver access and you will see telescope which is as I was saying earlier that's not your telescope that's your mount so and in the M mount class you can then use all the attributes there and the methods to control your mount so again for a mount um, let me just show the sort of things that are available so M mount dot and you can see here we've got an awful lot more properties and methods that you can use. So again there's a, a connected one there so which you set to true or false to connect to your mount and there'll be all sorts of uh, commands and attributes to slew your mount, set the tracking rates, everything you want to do on your mount you'd access through there. So the philosophy is very much the same. Okay so with as you can see very minimal coding you can actually come up with a very workable solution. Okay, I hope that has been of help. And thanks for watching.